Good morning, church family. It's Pastor Mark Chamberlain here, and it's great to be here. And to the visitors and to the regular viewers, a welcome to the Rockhampton Video Channel. This morning, we're week six, week six already in the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl today. I've just got one main point that I would like to put across today for you. But let's turn to the Bible. Eh? Let's turn to the scriptures. Matthew chapter 13 and verses 44 to 46. Jesus is speaking and he says here, The kingdom of heaven is like, uh, like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all, all that he had and bought that field. Interesting, just a bit of a sideline. Some of the do-gooders struggle with that verse because the guy trespasses, he finds a treasure and then he goes away and then he comes back and buys the field. But we're not going to talk about that today. Verse 45, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. And when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. We're focusing on giving up and receiving today. Have you ever given up something <clears throat> to get something better? Whether, you know, you've traded in a, uh, a car or you know, something like that. Something that you've really loved but you've gone for something better. Maybe something very costly, you know, to, to actually obtain that um, uh, the particular desired object. When I first got my fire, firearms license, I had a 22 rifle, which I, uh, I inherited from my father-in-law. That's it. I was very happy and very, very content, and I would shoot cans with it. But when my father passed away, I inherited and was able to transfer his old, um, uh, the 20-gauge shotgun, and an old, um, not a cadet rifle, uh, uh, it's a 310, onto my license, plus another 22 um, a rifle as well. For a short while, I sort of got the bug, and I would, you know, so frequent all these gun stores, and I'd go online and have a bit of a look around. <clears throat> I could have purchased a whole bunch of stuff, but I really couldn't afford it, and I just thought, nah, no, I will just not even to justify the expenditure. But then came that day where there was a 303 it, 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 as it came up online. I'm not just any 303. I've always wanted one, but if I can confess to you all, it's the report. It's the sound of the rifle that attracts me than anything else, yes, about the 303 itself. But here it was, this iconic 1917, as the Lithgow Mark III, it had the full you know, it's wood that went right up the barrel. And it was in that classic SMLE style, you know? It had hardly done any work. The bore was 10 out of 10, considering that it was over you know, it was 100 years old, and the numbers matched up, which to any collector is just a dream. It's heaven on a stick. I could even track its history online, <coughs> from um, the rifles to its assembly to its you know, release into civilian life, and it even came out with a bit of blurb that basically said where it had been for the last you know, 70 years. I eventually bought it, but it came at a price to me personally. Not just in the monetary value, but in some other ways as well, which I really won't, won't, won't actually go, go into. But that rifle since then has brought me such joy. Um, I only shoot targets, but I get to hear that iconic sound, and that's basically the reason why I love it. Because it came at such, such an emotional price, I value it. Greatly. Today, in, in the two of the parables, it's all about giving up to be able to receive again. Giving up a great cost to, re um, to receive something at great cost. They are pretty much the same in this concept, this idea which emphasizes a point. Whenever you see words or, or verses, concepts um, that's a repeated constantly in the Bible, it's done purposefully to get a message across. And to me, the emphasis today is about the value of the kingdom. And the value of the kingdom of heaven is beyond anything we could imagine. It's priceless. It is priceless, and to you and I, it is beyond the reach when we are in the natural fallen state. It's beyond anything that we could ever grasp. But to discover it, to find it, 
the kingdom is paramount. It is like a merchant that we read there who pursues the kingdom until he finds it. Everyone has this void in our lives. We have this emptiness that can't be filled by anything else. We can fill it up with money and power and jobs and education and everything like that. But there has to be something else in this existence. We ask that question. There's got to be more to life than this. We look for answers. We search for answers. But when we discover the kingdom of heaven, we do everything in our being to, to obtain it. In better terms, we give up everything so that it becomes the reality in our lives. Our lives are transformed. We find real joy, real um, out of contentment, real meaning, real purpose, and real peace. In giving up all those things of this carnal world, we gain all the things of this eternal spiritual world. And in other words, we make the kingdom of heaven first in all things. It's paramount. It is to be valued above all else. It is like that pearl of great prize. It is priceless. It is like that treasure in that field. It is priceless. So remembering that the kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven is about a ruler and his reign. It's about Jesus Christ and his kingdom. It's not a physical locality. We surrender to his lordship to receive his rule and reign over our lives. Finding Jesus is priceless. So to the general population that heard, heard, heard these two um, the parables on the day, this is new teaching, however teaching that they understood. It ran countercurrent to the teachings of the religious leaders of the day. This was true spiritual bread to them true spiritual food, unlike the carnal, burdensome teachings that they had sat under for a very, very long time. You can nearly tangibly feel the hope that Jesus imparts in his parables. This kingdom of heaven, it is open to all, all and sundry, not just a select few. It's not about your status or your ability. It's not about race and culture, nor whether you're smart enough. It's not about intellect or how good or bad that you have been. Like it's not the Santa Claus thing. The kingdom of heaven is about faith. It's about trust. It's about love. It is above all treasures. And might I say, the kingdom of God is the treasure. Let me pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these parables. Lord, they are here to inspire us, encourage us, and teach us. And Lord God, as we ponder this, that the kingdom of heaven is priceless beyond anything else, but because of Jesus, we can be partakers of this priceless treasure. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be mindful over the course of this day and, uh, and over the week ahead that, Lord, that we would be uh, filled afresh with, uh, with a sense of knowing that as we walk in the kingdom of heaven, we walk in a realm that is um, beyond anything that we could ever imagine. Lord, thank you for loving us first. Thank you for caring for us first. Thank you for saving us. And so, Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory and all the honour and all the praise for your name's sake. Amen. Well, friends, have a great week. Continue to read, you, read your Bibles and to pray. Listen to God when he speaks. Trust him, obey him. And again, look for those opportunities to, uh, you know, to bless other people. And we will see you soon. God bless you all. Thank you.